Destiny 2 Lightfall drops on February 28th. The date just keeps getting closer and closer every time I freaking turn around. Hi, my name is Fallout, and today I'm going to go over a bunch of information on D2 Lightfall. Details that you may need to know before potentially pre-ordering or dropping coin on the game in any way. Maybe you're a day one D2 player and you've already bought Lightfall, or maybe you're a returning player on the fence and you feel you don't know enough about the game to make a decision just yet. If you're the latter, I got you covered. Whether you decide to get the game or not, I'm going to just give you info and facts about Lightfall for you to make the most informed decision for you. But real quick, I gotta tell you about Geology, the sponsor of today's video. Geology is a 16-time award-winning skin, hair, and body care company recognized in Men's Health, Hype Beast, Esquire, and Ask Men Grooming Awards. Geology skincare can help you fight acne, reduce oiliness, prevent wrinkles, combat dark or puffy under eyes, have smoother skin, and target signs of aging. Oily skin and acne can hurt your self-confidence. And take it from me, high school fallout would have killed for this kind of stuff. I had a face like a pepperoni pizza. Geology sent me a package to try out their stuff, and out of everything, my favorite is actually this, the Eucalyptus Body Wash. It smells great, and I'm definitely moving it up in the body wash rotation this month. Click my link in the video description and take a 30-second diagnostic quiz. Just answer a few questions about your skin and your goals, and the geology team of dermatologists will design a regimen just for you that is shipped right to your door. It really is that easy. Again, they got so much. Everyday face wash, nourishing eye cream, repairing night cream, stuff I didn't even know existed. But regardless, I'm hyped to step up my skincare game and maybe look a little extra fresh on stream. Right now, you can get 70% off with my code FALLOUT70. Just click the link down in the pinned comment, and again, get 70% off with code FALLOUT70. Thank you, Geology. All right, let's dive in. Number one, new location. If you didn't know, the events of Lightfall take place in a brand new location called Neomuna. Located on Neptune, Neomuna is incredibly different from the last city on Earth. Whereas Earth is essentially a wasteland from the collapse, Neomuna is a thriving tech city with bright colors and a retro 80s futuristic vibe. Neomuna is inhabited by a group of beings known as Cloud Striders. They're like Guardians, except arguably more badass, as they protect their home like the Guardians do, but unlike the Guardians, Cloud Striders are just people who decided on their own to rise up to the challenge. No gifts from the Traveler, no ghosts to revive them, just unwavering courage and gigantic cojones. Not many people go in on ordering a new expansion based on environmental art alone, but if that matters to you, Neomuna does look really good. It's safe to say we'll be spending a lot of time there as well as we fight off the Shadow Legion army of Kallus who's attacking the city under a command of the Witness. Number two, most accessible day one raid to date. The new raid drops into the game on Friday, March 10th. To me, day one raid day is some of the most hectic fun I've ever had playing D2. Contest mode is usually a good challenge and a lot of teams go hard to beat the raid on day one in order to unlock a rare emblem that can only be earned by beating the raid in the first 24 hours. One year ago, during the Vow of the Disciple raid, teams were playing plagued with error codes and Bungie extended the window from 24 to 48 hours to compensate. The community response was mostly positive to that change and it was recently announced that Bungie would also be extending the day one raid emblem in Lifefall from 24 to 48 hours as well. I guess making it no longer a day one emblem but more of a contest mode emblem. TLDR, your team will have 48 hours to earn the contest emblem in the new Lifefall raid when it drops not 24 hours. A lot of people are really relieved by this as they won't have to take time off for work or school on Friday, March 10th, and even get some rest as they chase a contest mode completion. Number three, brand new class. Probably the thing about Lightfall people are most excited about, a brand new subclass, baby. Strand is the new flavor of the month, and at a 30,000 foot view, it's looking pretty interesting. After everything that Bungie's shown and talked about for Strand, what sticks out the most to me is that Strand appears to be both the high skill ceiling and movement class option. From chaining kills with weird abilities, to flying between groups of enemies with a grappling hook made of green energy, Strand is probably going to be very popular in both PvE and PvP. According to Bungie, all Strand classes will launch with two aspects and a shared pool of fragments with more to come. Bungie has also confirmed that unlocking these Strand abilities will not be as time-consuming as Stasis was in the launch of Beyond Light. Now I'll go into a little detail on what each subclass brings to the table. Number 4, Warlock Subclass, the Broodweaver. The TLDR on the Warlock Broodweaver is that you're kind of a Strand puppet master with minions to do your bidding. Warlocks can summon and threadlings that look like green worm creatures which seek out enemies to leap at and explode. All new subclasses can use threadlings, but only the warlock threadlings will return to the warlock and even travel with them if they can't find a target on their own. The warlock strand melee attack will allow them to cast an arcane needle, a projectile which tracks targets causing high damage and unraveling them upon impact. Broodweaver warlocks can also quickly chain up to three arcane needle attacks in a row. The warlock's two strand aspects are weaver's call and mind 
and spun invocation, both which can further enhance the power of your Threadling minions. Number five, Hunter subclass, the Threadrunner. Every strand subclass will have the ability to use the grapple, but like how the Warlock is a master of minions, the Hunter will be a master of movement. Their new melee attack, Threaded Spike, has the Hunter chucking out a green rope dart that bounces between enemies, damaging and severing them before coming back to the Hunter. When it comes back to the Hunter, it'll give melee energy back for each enemy hit. Hunters can even catch the rope dart by hitting the melee input button at just the right time, which apparently will earn you even more melee energy. I don't know about you, but that vaguely reminds me of reloading your weapon in Gears of War, which I think is actually kind of badass. The Hunter Strand aspects both play into the role of extra movement when using Strand. Slam seems to be akin to kind of a Strand version of Shatter Dive, and Widow's Silk gives both an extra grenade charge, which you can use to grapple around with, and allows you to potentially fully refund your grapple energy. With Silk, Hunters can set up multiple grapple chain points that their entire team can use, which I can't wait to roll into PvP and use with a full team of Hunters to fly around the map like a team of coked up Spider-Men. Number six, Titan subclass, the Berserker. If you're into the classic Titan beat em up at close range power fantasy, eh, good news for you, Berserker is right up your alley. The Titan strand melee is frenzied blade, dash forward and slash at enemies with arm blades, severing victims and also decreasing their damage output. Nice. The Titan melee also has a default set of three charges, which you can chain together if you want. The Titan strand aspects lean into the Titan being extra beefy via woven mail, which is kind of like a strand overshield that protects only your body and also being able to generate more melee energy. Drenger's Lash allows the Titan Barricade to send out a wave of energy that suspends any enemies who get touched by it. The Titan Super is pretty much Wolverine Berserk mode. Hey, I wonder if that's where they got the name from. Pretty much it allows them to slash through a ton of enemies to build energy for a super attack which can fire out projectiles. Number seven, wild new Lightfall exotics. Of course, more exotics coming into a new D2 expansion is kind of a given, but I'm always down fairly bad for new stuff that looks weird and off the wall. Very obvious spoiler warning info for these exotics if you want to not know about them until the expansion drops. The final warning sidearm has charged tracking rounds that automatically target nearby enemies. The deterministic chaos machine gun will weaken enemies on the fourth shot and then grant volatile rounds on the 16th shot. Winterbite is the first ever exotic heavy glaive, which can straight up freeze enemies with frost orbs. Whether or not you can beat people down with the glaive in PvP without needing to pick up heavy ammo is not yet known. The Quicksilver Storm auto rifle is already in the game right now if you've pre-ordered Lightfall, but the exotic catalyst coming in Lightfall makes grenades create strand tangles on a kill. A buoyant leap, the new Titan leg armor, will allow your barricade to spawn additional lashes that will tie up enemies. The Swarmer's Warlock leg armor will allow you to spawn more Threadling minions to do your bidding when you destroy tangles. The Hunter's I'm not going to try to pronounce it exotic helmet looks really, really OP. When grappling around, you get Woven Mail, a defensive buff to body damage that also provides extra flinch resist. There will undoubtedly be more exotics to come, but that's what we know about so far. Number eight, new PvP map and returning maps. Bungie has promised the community two returning PvP maps and one entirely brand new map in the year of Lightfall. After a long time of not knowing, they recently revealed that the two returning maps would be Meltdown and Citadel. Meltdown will be the first to arrive, popping up in Season of the Deep, aka one season after Lightfall launches. After that, we'll get our brand new PvP map in Season 22. No pictures yet, but we do know it'll be a Vex network map of some kind. After that, Citadel will return in the last season before the final shape. Also not nearly as exciting, but Bungie will be going through all the existing maps and doing a spawn retuning pass to make sure they play slightly better. Number nine, Guardian Ranks and Commendations. In Lightfall, Bungie is introducing two features into the game designed to improve how players kind of interact with each other in game. Commendations are along the line of leaving very specific player feedback to another Guardian. Think of it as kind of a Yelp review meets earning an in-game title. Certain commendations like Pace Setter and Saint's Favorite are only available to be given in Trials of Osiris, while others like Perceptive and Knowledgeable are given out in Raid and Dungeon content. Eventually, the commendations that you earn, again from other players reviewing you, will become a history for the kind of player that you've been. Guardian ranks will apparently be made up of 11 individual ranks and be tied closely to commendations. Those at the highest level of Guardian ranks will have proven themselves to be players who are consistently appreciated by others in the community. The idea behind Guardian ranks is to incentivize veteran players to help new players get into some of the game's harder end game content. Definitely a good idea. Sometimes players on LFG sites will intentionally avoid partying up with and helping new players due to a lack of experience. Number 10, new in-game loadout system. Bungie is finally delivering a big feature that the community has been begging for for years. 
years, the ability to actually make custom loadouts in-game and swap them on and off with just one click. From Lightfall onwards, players will be able to save every detail of their character page as a custom loadout. The loadout system will also feature a new mod manager as well, with the intention of making, quote, build construction easier. According to an interview with Bungie written by PC Gamer, the new in-game loadout system will allow you to change loadouts in the middle of an activity. If you don't know, that's actually huge, considering you can only currently change loadouts with third-party applications if you're not in the middle of an activity. Easier loadout creation and application, I am completely on board. Number 11, Total Armor Mod Overhaul. Bungie announced not too long ago that Lightfall would introduce a huge armor mod overhaul, which is going to completely shake up the meta and change how we put together our custom loadouts. The game plan is basically to streamline the entire process, which Bungie has already started doing by making all armor mods free for all players in game right now. The new armor mod screen should make it easier for players to start build crafting and see their new build come together. Other big changes include the fact that mod energy types are being removed completely, so you'll no longer need to have four different versions of one armor piece just to have access to certain mods. The combat style socket is becoming an additional mod socket, while the energy of many armor mods are being straight up reduced. Armor mods that used to give buffs to weapons based on their archetype, for example, hand cannon loader, will now benefit weapons based on their damage type to make things easier. Also, artifact mods are being turned into unlockable perks, meaning you won't have to socket them anymore, they'll actually be passively applied to your loadout. You'll still have to pick and choose which of those new artifact perks you have enabled at any given time, but you will be able to do it much easier now and you'll be able to freely reset your artifact choices. With the combat mod socket going away on armor, a lot of mods are going to get folded into a new thing called armor charge. TLDR, equipping an armor mod that uses armor charge will grant you access to the armor charge system. Depending on what mods you equip, you'll be able to build up stacks of armor charge, which will then provide unique benefits to your guardian. Sounds like a wild rework but again, the goal is streamlining builds and making it easier to build craft, which I, for one, am really hyped about. Number 12, reworked champion stunning. The community has made it clear that fighting champions is really annoying and Bungie has finally listened. Holly goddamn Luya. Like I mentioned earlier, artifact mods no longer need to be slotted. They'll just apply passive benefits when you want to pick which mods to turn on. However, you'll also be able to stun champions without using anti-champion mods from your artifact at all. Starting in Lightfall, barrier champions will be able to get stunned by certain criteria met simply by what class you're playing. For example, you can stun barrier champions with any weapon while your guardian is radiant. And that goes for other champions too. You can stun overload champs with jolt and stun unstoppable champs with shatter. There's more options for each, but the bottom line is each class has built-in champion stunning without the use of mods, which should make for much less annoying end game content. Number 13, Legendary Difficulty Campaign. Legendary Campaign ain't new. It was introduced when Bungie dropped the Witch Queen, but goddamn did people really like it. A very different change from the regular ass campaign, which a lot of people simply just blow right through with no challenge at all. Legendary campaign from the Witch Queen featured both a tougher difficulty and better rewards, including guaranteed exotic drops. With how good the Witch Queen legendary campaign hit, I expect more of the same in Lightfall, which I'm definitely looking forward to. Number 14, two new dungeons. They won't drop immediately with Lightfall, unfortunately. That should probably go without saying, but they will apparently drop in season 21 and season 23. If you're unfamiliar, dungeons are kind of like raids, but just a little bit smaller. A fun-sized raid built for three people instead of six. Very likely with all the other dungeons that came before it, the two new dungeons in Lightfall will probably have their own armor sets, weapon, and a unique exotic that I won't get for a while due to having bad RNG. If you want to unlock the dungeons, you'll apparently need to purchase the annual pass slash dungeon key. Number 15, balance changes. If I'm being dead honest, gun to my head, I don't think this will create a perfectly balanced game or anything. I I legit don't even know if it's possible for any game to be perfectly balanced these days, but whatever. Bungie has detailed a lot of changes coming to both weapons and subclasses in Lightfall. While that might be more interesting to players currently invested in the game, it's worth taking a look at the changes Bungie has thrown out if you haven't played in a while, just in case. Maybe an exotic you love is finally getting some much needed attention, like Polaris Lance, Two-Tailed Fox, or Prometheus Lens. Or maybe a super that has long been a thorn in your paw is finally getting kicked right in the gooch, like Ward of Dawn or Thunder Crash. 
too many details to go over here for sure, but I'll link both balance articles down in the pinned comment if you want to thumb through. Go ahead and decide for yourself, but I for one am fairly hype about the new meta. Number 16, even easier weapon crafting and enhanced weapons. Bungie has very casually announced that when Lightfall drops, they will be completely removing resonant elements from the game, i.e. the currency that you need to build up in order to do any weapon crafting at all. Standard currencies like Glimmer and Enhancement Cores will replace the element cost that exists today. They'll also be removing the Deep Side Attunement objective altogether. Resonant and Harmonic Alloys will still be used at launch, but will be overhauled later in the Lightfall year. On top of that, Bungie is adding enhanced weapons to the game. In a nutshell, if you get a random weapon roll that you really like, you can potentially enhance it, which will then give it access to both enhanced perks and intrinsic properties just like a crafted weapon. Not every weapon in Lightfall will be enhanceable, but they are starting with new raid weapons this year and then building on that system. If there's any other interesting tidbits about Lightfall that I didn't have time to mention that you want to share, please hit me with them down in the comment section. If you're new to the channel or haven't already, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button as I will 100% be making a ton of new content when Lightfall drops. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you on stream.